Thanks for checking out my video. If you want to learn more from me, I have a lot of classes on Udemy. You can find the links to a lot of those in the description. Okay, so just a little bit of housekeeping. If you hear slightly weird cat noises, my one of my cats is in heat right now, and she's running around here making all sorts of crazy noises. Um. Anyway, so this is probably like a little bit of a brainchild of what of different things that I've been thinking about lately and kind of speaking to something that I'm probably going to be talking about on the channel a, a lot more um, over the course of, well, years and years and years, basically since like 2007 ish when I got into magic in the first place. Are you behind me? Yep. She is. Let me see if I can catch her. Come here. So, since I started working with magic, you know, I started off with reading a ton of the different books that you see behind me. And most of those um, started off with, you know, different subject matter of love, money, prosperity, blah, blah, blah. And it would give a little blurb about, you know, what it's talking about with the different kinds of things that people want help with. And then it gave a bunch of cookie cutter spells with a lot of different ingredients that you can f you know find at various stores you put them together and you go through a like a scripted ritual of you do this with these items and you say this thing and then this is what you think about and then whatever you are looking to get is going to come to being you know it's these cookie cutter spell books that I've been talking about for you know on and off for quite a while and I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I kind of complain about them, which is why when I wrote Magical Theater, um, the, my first book that I wrote, the I don't have any I don't have any cookie cutter spells in any of my books. And I had somebody that asked me about making a a spell book or videos that had just simple spells to do. And I'm still wondering about playing around with that because of my hesitancy and my dislike for cookie cutter spells. But what I've kind of, what I kind of noticed over you know reflecting over years and years and years of doing this as as I get older is that magic is mainly geared towards you have a problem here's a spell boom and it should fix the thing you know and this relates to life in like a lot of different ways particular particularly a lot of people think of. All right, let's relate magic to health for a minute, right? You have a headache, you take a Tylenol. You have blood, you know, you have like, what is it, blood pressure problems, you take a pill. You have, you know, tons of different ailments have medication that you go to your doctor, you complain about a certain thing, and they give you a medication for it, and it kind of takes away the problem. It solves, solves the problem. Does it really, though? Um, you know, we treat our, our health in a way of like not preventativeness, but just fixing symptoms and problems when it comes up. And I find that magic to some people, especially with cookie cutter spells and stuff and the different things that people ask me for on uh, Etsy with magic for hire. Um, I'm effective, by the way. Is when problems come up, people say, come to me or others and they're like, hey, I need a spell for X problem here. But... This is where it's like whack-a-mole, right? You have a problem, you do a spell for it, the problem goes away. That problem, another problem then creeps up. Or maybe you have that same kind of problem in a different form. And you do a spell for that, or you take action on this. And you're just constantly shooting, you know, at the problems, fixing problem after problem after problem. And I mean, life is ups and downs, and life is problem after problem after problem. But wouldn't you want to kind of prevent the entire idea of problems and this is where manifestation and law of attraction and metaphysics and magic all kind of meet in the same in the same avenue where if you look at magic as just a thing to do to solve a problem when the problem comes up is that doable yes but there's a way that you can do magic that's not just 
sitting at your altar when you need to solve a problem. And I have a problem, I'm going to address it, boom, that's done. Next week, I have another problem, I'm going to address it, boom, that's done. And, you know, checking problems off the list and waiting for the next problem to come up. The way that we carry ourselves every day, the way that we think, the way that we talk, the way that we walk, the way that we relate to ourselves, to our inner self, to our past, to our present, to our future, to other people in our lives can help mitigate those kinds of problems. Magic, to a lot of people and a lot of different books, talks about the outer work and fixing that outer stuff. But there's so much more about fixing the inner stuff that you can do that will actually prevent the outer stuff from happening. Because we create things all the time. We manifest what we fear. We manifest what we attract and even what we attract consciously and what we attract subconsciously. And even when we do a spell for a particular thing, we might have deeply held beliefs or fears or different things that we are not addressing that will manifest something the complete opposite or manifest exactly what we're looking for. And this is why... I'm rubbing another hint here. Inner work makes is so much more important when you're thinking big picture and when you don't want to play magic whack-a-mole with your problems on and off. <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember, I put a, I think it was a short video where it got classified as a short, but there's a, plenty of times when I'm trying to make a video and um, this one here, likes to talk quite loudly, you know? Anyways, magic doesn't have to just be whack-a-mole where it solves problems, like going to your doctor for every kind of ailment that you have. Imagine if you took care of yourself in a, in a way where you don't have to go to the doctor, or at least not as often, right? You eat right, you exercise, you sleep good, which I'm definitely not doing, seeing as I only got about three hours of sleep before I started making this video. But preventative health measures means you don't have to take a ton of medications. Maybe you live longer. You don't have to bother your doctor as much. Preventative energetic practices, preventative thinking with the way that you think and what you think about and what you train your brain to do means that you are going to manifest better opportunities and more what is it opportunities and situations that you want more than different things that you don't want that you then have to do focused magic on hopefully i'm making sense with this but just let me know in the comments i think i'm just going to keep going for a little bit but magic itself can be used both in the context of just in your ritual where you have a highly focused thing of setting in your intention and you do the whole psychodrama to really put your energy into something or you can do that every single day and we really are doing this kind of thing every single day every time that we think about something consciously or subconsciously we are putting that energy towards something every time that we act based on something that happened to us in our past, that's energies flowing through us and attracting that same kind of situation that played out in the past to play out in the future, unless it is resolved. It, things try to perpetuate themselves, and the universe is always in a mode of creation and destruction, so you have to think to yourself, what am I creating every single day? What do I want to be creating? What am I destroying every single day? Maybe it's opportunities. Maybe it's your health. Maybe it's your sleep. I mainly destroy my sleep. <laughs> and think about what you're feeding into and therefore what you're creating and what you're destroying. So you can treat magic and think of magic as just something you step on your altar to in order to play whack-a-mole to solve problems here and there. Or you can think about magic as something that you do every single day consciously or subconsciously that you can then, once you start to get that in your head, 
that's when you can really start to create the reality that you want much faster and much more effectively by realizing every single thing that you do can be magic. I think we came full circle on that. Let me know down in the comments. Good hunting.